Thank you very much, Jason. So I hope everyone can hear me all right. Um, I am going to go through the presentation as, and demonstration as Jason described. So we're going to be focusing majority of uh, this time on this new live DEM editing capability that we have in Geomatica 2014. So just to give you a little bit of a background, for those of you who are not using 2014, I do highly recommend that you go to our website and download the new Geomatica 2014 version. It's got a lot of different improvements. One major improvement of which is the way we can edit digital elevation models with a very high level of accuracy without having to go to stereoscopic software, which is quite nice. Now, there's a lot of other value in that in this tool other than just DEM, such as our Python support, such as this new smart geofill capability, which I will also be discussing today. Um, just briefly. And finally, there's also, and there's a variety of other new capabilities such as new change detection support, new synthetic aperture radar support, and we have a brand new viewer and an update to our GUI. So with that being said, we are going to focus this webinar on the DEM extraction side because we did a significant amount of engineering effort in order to create a brand new concept, a brand new way of approaching elevation models so that we can convert or so we can extract accurate digital surface models and then convert them to very accurate digital terrain models, perform accuracy assessments on them, and do all of this without having to use 3D stereoscopic software. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And we're going to go through a variety of different examples. The first one is just the quick 101. So how do we go about generating our DSM? what is there. So we're going to start off with an aerial one, so an aerial example, and we're going to go through a couple different scenarios such as fixing bridges and looking at a couple different tools and capabilities we have within our new live DEM editor. And then if we have time, we're going to quickly show you an example of satellite data to show how this can also be used for working with satellite imagery. So let's begin. As we get going, or before we get going, I just want to introduce you to some of the new concepts. So really what we want to do is we want to extract automatically a digital surface model, and this is basically a elevation model that includes buildings and trees and surface features. Ultimately, we need to remove those surface features in order to create our DTM. So a lot of work, once again, has gone into OrthoEngine itself in terms of how we go about extracting our digital surface models. Now this example is with an aerial data, but it, the concept is also true when working with satellite. So one of the very nice features is that you can select your entire data set, so all of your aerial images or all of your satellite images that cover your area of interest, and you can perform the DSM extraction on all of them at once with our automatic batch processing. I'm going to show this after I do, after, I'm going to show this a real example of this after I just go through the concepts here. So the first thing that happens is OrthoEngine is going to look at all the different stereo pairs and identify automatically all the different stereo pairs, which images are associated to which other images. So it's going to find the left and right looking stereo pairs. At which point it also creates the epipolar image. From that, we can then extract the digital surface model. And it does this for each pair individually. Finally, it's going to take all the different stereo pairs here and it's going to mosaic them together into one single mosaic DEM or DSM in this case. So this all happens under the, under the hood. You don't have to worry about this. OrthoEngine organizes everything for you as you're going to see when I run through my example. But then at this point, we need to then generate a digital elevation model from the DSM. I mean, perhaps the DSM is your final product and you want to do some analysis such as land cover change, volumetric calculations, that's fine. Then you can work from the DSM. But if you're working within the standard orthomosaicing workflow, we ultimately need to get a digital terrain model or digital elevation model, which is basically removing the surface features such as buildings and trees. And so that we only so that we're only left with the bare earth terrain. So this is an example of a DSM that we've extracted directly from OrthoEngine. As you can see, we have the outlines of the buildings and trees, 
And then ultimately we want to convert it to a DEM where we remove the buildings and trees service features but still retain the bare earth elevation and the integrity. So we want to make sure this is the challenging part is how do we eliminate and remove building features without negatively affecting our steep slopes of our terrain. So the live DEM editor comes with all the tools that you'll need in order to perform these operations. This is just another example of a concept of fixing a bridge. So we also can do complicated edits on very complex um, features such as bridges, such as very uh, varying terrain uh, slopes, and other features such as cliffs and so on. So this is an example of the bridge before the edits. And then here's an example of the bridge after the edits. This is another example of using, of working on an area and trying to filter out, remove the surface features. So essentially, with the live DEM editor, we have a special terrain filter, which is what you're going to use for doing majority of your work. And you can very quickly remove the surface features. But you can also work on just specific areas which allow you to set your parameters that are more appropriate for that area. Whereas the problem when working with global filters, oftentimes you only have one setting and it's not adaptive. And therefore, you end up getting a lot of blunders and errors that you have to go back and fix afterwards. We remove that part of that iterative process from the workflow. The next thing is we need to validate that the edits we have made are accurate. So the way we do that is we have a 2.5D approach. And what that does is we basically can draw a window of interest over the area that we've edited. And it's going to search through all the different images that intersect this uh, bounding box. And then it's going to generate quick ortho preview, so an ortho, a one-to-one -one ortho of the pixels within these bounding box for the different stereo images. And this allows us, and it does it based on the edits we've made to the DEM. So this allows us to then toggle back and forth between the two images and see if there's noticeable movements on the bare earth features. So what we want to see is that bare earth or, surf or ground uh, bare earth features such as the roads, paint lines, grass, they should not be moving. They should be very stationary because when we project and generate an ortho image from different viewing angles, once we ortho rectify it, the pixel should be in the exact same position regardless of what viewing angle you're looking at. But then surface features such as trees and houses, well, they are going to move back and forth because we removed the elevation values of those surface features from the DEM. And what we want to look for in this case is that we don't have any uh, deformities within the buildings or in the, or in the trees. So that's really what we're looking for in terms of a, an accuracy assessment. And then we can use this information to sort of to calculate the level of error, the level of accuracy within the terrain models that we have uh, generated or extracted. So with that quick overview being provided, let's just quickly take a look at doing some real demonstrations here. So the first thing, as I said, is I want to just guide you through the process of setting up a project in Ortho Engine and using our DEM editing tools because it's incredibly simple as we do most of the challenging work under the hood, as I said. So at this point, I've opened up an Ortho Engine project where I've gone through the process of already setting up the initial step. So Really, all I've done was I've set up so it's an air photo project, digital camera. We have an ex exterior orientation file, which we're importing directly. I set up my projection information. I've inputted my camera calibration information here. So this is all information that comes with your aerial data. And then I've inputted my 14 images. Oops. added or inputted my exterior orientation information that contains the uh, information necessary for creating the math model required to generate the DEM and ultimately the orthos. And at this point, I can go right down to our DEM from stereo. So here, 
I can now click on the first button here, which is create the epipolar images. So we have all of our epipolar images in here. Now, if you're using some of our older versions, especially 2012 and older, you might have had to manually select the left and the right image for each pair and then add them to the table. Well, that's just incredibly time consuming. So as of, I believe, Geomatica 2013, we had, we've added some new epipolar, automatic epipolar selection capabilities. In this case, we've added a new one in 2014, which is called Optimum Pairs. And what this will do is it's going to look to find all the different overlapping pairs that have more, that have more overlap than a certain, or have a, a greater overlap than a certain percentage hard-coded. And then it's going to make sure that we're getting enough overlap to ensure that we can create very accurate DSMs but we're not getting too much so that we don't have over or so we're not generating or processing more pixels than we need. So it's a fine balance between performance to make sure that we don't have any redundant performance, but also ensuring that we get enough overlap so that we can generate, so we can just extract the DSMs from the centermost part of the images. And this will basically ensure that we get a very accurate DSM, but also that we can generate it in an effective or an efficient amount of time. So the next thing I'm going to so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to select Epipole or Optimum pairs. I'm going to then choose the all for the different channels. And this is important because this is then going to be passed along to our output DSM, which will allow us to use some live DEM editing. Now. With the live DEM editing, as I said, a lot of the stuff, there's a lot of linking because we, we need to be able to go back to our raw imagery to regenerate the orthos to do our accuracy assessment. So that's essentially what the system's going to do for you. You don't have to worry about that. The system automatically sets these links up. So I'm just going to browse now for an epipolar, or sorry, for my output folder. I can essentially put it anywhere I want. I'm just going to put it in here to keep it neat. And I will create a new one, call it Epi New. Okay, so we have that set. I can then go add epipolar pairs to table. And it's going to automatically find the different pairs and add them all to this table here. Then at this point, I can then set if I want to use a downsample factor. Now, I don't recommend using a downsample factor because you want your epi, you want your DSM to be extracted from the highest resolution epipolar images for the best detail possible. And then when you generate your DEM, if you want a coarser DEM, then you can just set it in the DEM extraction panel. So at this point, I'm all set up. All I need to do is just go generate pairs. So now it's going to go through each pair, and it's going to do essentially what I showed you here. At this point, it's going to generate. Whoops! It's going to generate essentially a epipolar left and right looking image for each of these different pairs in this table. Now this will take about five to ten minutes to run with these images at this resolution. So I'm just going to stop the process, and I went ahead of time, and I generated that result or the epipolars, so we can just show you the next step without having to wait for the process to finish. So I'm just going to open up a different file here. And all I've done here, the only thing I did was I had, before this presentation or this webinar, I went and previously finished the processing of our epipolar pairs. So at this point, once, we've, once that process is complete, you just close that window and then you can go to extract DEM automatically. So it's going to automatically find all the epipolar pairs that were in that we just generated. We can now go then to select all and we can then finally go to create geocoded DEM. This means that we're going to get a digital elevation model or digital surface model more accurately with geocoded values which is really ultimately what we need. We can then choose browse for an output file. So I can go to here. I'm just going to delete that. Oops. Make sure I got the right one. 
I'll just create a new one. And we'll just call it dsm.pix. And then we can set our resolution. In this case, I'm just going to set it to one meter. I can go extract DEM. So that's really all that I need to do, and it's going to now go through and do all that work. So at this point, what it's doing, and if we oops, go back here, just to return to our PowerPoint, just to provide you with a little bit of context, what it's doing at this point is what we described here. So it is automatically, so as we saw, it automatically found the stereo pairs, but now it's extracting the DSM for each stereo pair. And then it's going to, after it's done that, it's going to then automatically mosaic it together into one single large DEM or DSM. And then we can use our live DEM editing tools in order to create, convert the DSM into a terrain model or DEM. So some other things that you would notice as compared to a Geomatica 2013 is that our DEM extraction itself is now gets better detail. So it's not only these workflow changes that we've improved, but we actually have improved the algorithm to get better quality output DE or DSMs. And we've also made it so that it's about two times faster than our previous version. So once again, we don't need to wait and watch this whole thing process as I've pre-computed the, uh, the DSM just so that we can then go directly into our live DEM editor. So what we're going to do now, is this is the DEM or the DSM that was extracted earlier. So now I can load into focus. So one thing you should have noticed is that focus itself has changed. We have updated our, our look and feel. But most importantly, and the thing that's really important, is we have a, an improved viewer, which now um, displays based on a tiling scheme, as well as is, does not lock you in as you are zooming. So as it's loading, and you're, for example, if you zoom in and if it's still loading, well, you're not locked into that. You can then zoom back out and in. Plus, it's a more um, responsive viewer in general. So a lot of work was also done to our overall viewer. So that's another great reason to upgrade to Geomatica 2014. So here is the live DEM editor. You can click on this and it's going to open up this toolbar as well as automatically render our digital surface model into a pseudo color hillshade, actually a dynamic pseudo color hillshade. So as we pan around the pseudo color table is going to update automatically. So just to show you the quick basics to get started, so everything's already linked. You just need to open up that DSM that you extracted in Ortho Engine. You just need to open that up in Focus and then come to this tool. The next thing we're going to do is just going to create an empty polygon layer, which is going to be our editing polygons. At this point, I can then draw a polygon either around a single area, or in this case, I'm just going to draw it around the entire DSM. And I'm going to perform, so I'm going to choose from this list of operations. We've added many, many different tools to it, but it's actually it's quite simple once you begin to work with it. Really all you need to know is that the terrain filters are more global filters. They're for doing majority of your editing. But then we have some special filters for fixing bridges, or special operations for fixing bridges, lakes, rivers, forested areas, so on and so forth. So we provide you with all the different tools you need to, to create a very accurate digital terrain model without having to go to 3D stereo software. So here we're just going to choose train filter flat. I'm going to set my size to 250 because we have some large buildings here. And then I can simply, under the selected polygon, it's going to apply this terrain filter and I can just go apply. And within a few short seconds, it's going to remove the surface features. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. We'll just undo that edit and then redo. What's quite nice is you notice it removes the surface features without touching the terrain, even though we have some very steep escarpment over here. 
This is another interesting area as well. We have this mound. So sometimes another challenging part when you're editing a DEM is you may not know what the feature is you're looking at. I might initially have thought that this was a surface feature, but then when I click on this display DEM, we quickly make a very uh, lower resolution preview of the ortho that comes with your DEM, and we can just quickly see what the feature is. So now I know that this is actually a mound, and I maybe perhaps wish to keep it. Okay, so that's the basic tool. This is probably the most common tool you're going to use when you're filtering out your DEM. Another one is removing these little bumps. So sometimes we end up with little bumps and little pits. So we can remove these little bumps to sort of just smooth out the DSM or the DEM even more. And same thing with pits. We can fill in some pits that you know might have might cause problems in your overall um, orthos or in terms of the actual DEM. So I mean at this point I've essentially done I would say about 90% of the work necessary to get to a final digital terrain model or final DEM. Now there's others, some other very nice tools. For example, how do we know if the edits we've made are actually accurate? Well, what we can do is click on this one-to-one, -one, and this is basically our accuracy validation tool. We can now draw a window over an area and what it's going to do is it's going to automatically orthorectify all the pixels that intersect that region that I just drew. And it's going to mosaic them together. And then we can, and it's going to generate this ortho based on the edits we've made in our DEM. So if I go back here, I'm just going to adjust our screen a little bit in order to make it a little bit easier to work with this down there. And now you can see within this bounding box we've regenerated the pixels at one to one. So I can zoom in very close at one to one to see what my orthos will look like. So that's the first test is just how do your ortho images look? Do they look crisp? Are the edges nice and crisp there? But that's not enough to know whether your orthos or whether your DEM is accurate in terms of its vertical accuracy. So what we would need to do at this point is we can flicker back and forth between a right and a left looking image. And if our DEM is accurate, if the vertical accuracy is high, then what we should notice, for example, if we go to a paint strip here, then we should notice that it's not moving. This is right on the ground. It's, this one is pixel to sub-pixel accuracy that we're achieving here, which means that we have incredible incredibly high high accuracy in terms of our vertical um, values provided in our DEM. For example, if we go within the trees, we can see there's some movement here, so perhaps there's some inaccuracy there. What's really nice is even within the trees, we can see there's still very high level of accuracy. There's actually an equation that we can apply in order to calculate based on the amount of pixel shift. So if we just go up to a feature, for example, this edge here. Oops. Let's go to a paint strip. We go back and forth. We can see that it's subpixel, but say it did move by a couple pixels. Well, then we would be able to identify what kind of uh, or calculate the vertical inaccuracy or the vertical error that's causing that shift. So just to show you as another example, I'm going to very quickly draw polygon, I'm going to purposely make an error here just to show you what it would look like if there is an inaccuracy. So I'm going to go to average elevation and I'm just going to flatten this area. So this is not something you would want to do. I just want to show you this so that you can see what would happen in our accuracy assessment window or a quick ortho preview window when you have an inaccurate area. Now this is going to be a large error, obviously. So as you can see, I've introduced a large error in this region. So I can now update this window. It's going to now regenerate the orthos based on the new edits I've made here. We can begin to see what kind of effect this will have. So now we can see that we have significant shift.
So as I said, this is the two and a half T concept. So now with this, for example, if we go back and forth and we would find a feature, we could see what kind of shift it has, how many pixels, and we could calculate the error in our DEM based on that. But then, of course, we can go back into it and we can fix it up. We can repair our DEM. So I'm just going to undo those edits. And then we have tools, as I said, to repair this. Oftentimes, we can go back to our DSM and copy and paste the pixels back in if we made some errors. Okay, so that's really essentially the primary tool and some of the accuracy assessments capabilities within the live DEM um, concept here. Now, another nice feature within this is the ability to view our DEM, the edits that we've made, in a 3D fly-through. Now, this is not necessarily so useful in this particular DEM, but if you're working in a forested area and other regions, uh, especially in dense urban areas, being able to fly through and see where you might have certain spikes that are unnatural, especially in, den in areas where you have a significant amount of uh, terrain prominence, then what this can allow you to do is you can identify where you might have accidentally shaved off uh, a, a mountain ridge because you had a too aggressive, your uh, terrain filter was too aggressive, or areas where perhaps trees did not get properly removed, so you have unnatural spikes. And those things can really show up in this window. So these are the two. So with this, the fly, um, so the 3D fly through, along with the quick ortho update, those are really the two primary quality assurance tools that you can use in order to assess the vertical accuracy and the quality of your digital elevation model. And then the other beautiful thing about this is that you actually can see what your orthos are going to look like before you generate them. So no longer are you going to generate ortho images and then find smears in them or inaccuracies and then have to go back into your 3D stereoscopic software, make the edits, and then regenerate the orthos and then add them back into your mosaic again. That whole workflow is being eliminated by being able to see your orthos before you actually generate them. All right. So that's just a quick overview to introduce you to the tools. I'd now like to show you a bit of a, another concept. So it's not, sorry, just another technique. So what we're going to work here is we're just going to go to another um, area. And this is a different DSM that we've extracted. And we've already performed the edits to parts of this DSM. So here's the, oops. So we've performed a lot of the edits, but we left this part here, and we're just going to edit that part because there's some cool concepts that's important to show about some other features and capabilities within our live DEM editor that just makes it so powerful and so capable. So once again, we're just load the DEM. This is exactly as what was extracted with exception of the edits we've made from Ortho Engine. We go to DEM editing. As, we, as I've already mentioned, you're going to get the pseudo color, um, dynamic pseudo color output. So we can see the amount of detail in this DSM. It's a very, very beautiful looking DSM as we look into this region. We can also just take a look to see at the features that it's describing in terms of the true imagery or true color composite. And now what we need to do is we want to edit this region. So there's some very steep and complex terrain in this area that our two settings for the terrain filter may not be able to handle. So I've loaded a polygon that I previously generated. And the concept I'm going to show you here today is a concept known as stabilizing areas that otherwise might be filtered out. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on this area here. Or we're going to just finalize this region here and remove all the surface features. But there's some areas within this complex terrain that might get removed as well. So the same concept is true. We just need to select our polygon of interest, choose our operation. We're going to choose a train filter rough this time because it's a little bit more rugged. We're going to choose our size. We're just going to choose 250 as it seems to be a pretty generic one. 
and then we can go apply. Now I'm gonna, I know this time I'm just going to go apply with overwrite. So apply with overwrite is essentially going to behave as if these polygons are not there. So it's going to modify even the pixels under these polygons. So as you can see, we've removed majority of the terrain features, but still keeping this complex landscaping. We can now just do a bump filter to remove some of the bumps, and then a pit filter to fill in some of the pits. And apply it twice. Now, what I want to focus on is these areas. So as I said, I applied it with overwrite, which ignores our stabilizers. And all these stabilizers are, are just another polygons drawn within this large polygon. Stabilizer is a term that I'm coining, so you can call them whatever you want. But what I want to, the point that I'm trying to make here is that in certain types of complex terrain, no matter how you set your terrain filter, you're going to remove surface features that you don't want to remove. And then when you validate it with your live DEM editor, you can see that you've introduced error. So now this is where the stabilizers come in. So if I undo the edits that I made, and then I redo it, but this time I'm just going to go to apply so that it now takes into consideration these stabilizers. I can then go apply. And now it no longer removed the actual stabilizers, just the vegetation around it. Okay, so let's take a look to see how that affects our the quality or the accuracy of our digital elevation model. So now when I flick back and forth, we can see now we're quite stable. So that's another important concept. So if you begin to work with this tool, you should be knowledgeable about some of these different capabilities and tricks, best practices, in terms of how to generate the best digital elevation model. Once you have these uh, concepts down, your, life will, uh, your ability to generate digital elevation models uh, with a level of accuracy that's required, but also in a, t in a very um, uh, expedited process, is and it's not only that, but it's also much more much uh, much more simplistic to work with, as opposed to using 3D stereoscopic software. So it's a wonderful tool in order to work with here. So now, the last concept I want to describe is working with some more specific features. So we're going to work with a bridge from an aerial um, data set. So actually, before we do open this, let me just show you what we want to create. So we have a DSM. This is as extracted from RAW. And essentially, we want to convert it into a nice, smooth digital terrain model with our bridges accurately digitized. So that's the concept that we're going to show. I'm going to show you the basic uh, workflow in order to do that. Okay, so we've already removed the majority of our surface features, but we left the bridge in order uh, messy so that we can just repair the bridge. So once again, I'm just going to go to my live DEM editing tools. Now, for the sake of our demonstration, I've already pre-drawn the polygons, but you would have to draw these polygons if you're working on a new area. And the first ones I have is just polygons that outline the bridge itself. So what we want to do is we want to repair this bridge, number one, smoothen it out. We want to fix errors like this, and if there's, we have nice tools as well for fixing if there's like large gaps, which is often the case, we have tools for fixing those as well. And then finally, once we have that, we want to remove or, or fix, or edit rather, the area under the bridge. So we're not only just going to fix the bridge, but also the surrounding region. All right, so we have some special filters for that, or special operations for that. And once again, like anything, you can start off with by selecting the individual polygon that you want to work from. So we select that polygon, then we go down for this, we're going to use our road median filter. 
I'm going to set a large filter size of 50 pixels and I'm just going to click apply with overwrite because this is the upper level of the bridge and I want it to overwrite other polygons that intersect it. All right, so that part's now done. We can then go to over here, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a road median filter, which will help fix these holes and remove some of these bumps. So I'm once again going to go apply with overwrite. And you can see it maintains the gradient as well of the ramp. Now I'm going to go for this other level here, which is a lower level of the bridge. And I'm going to once again go road median filter. Same one, I'm going to go apply with overwrite to this one, apply with overwrite. So there's really nothing special here. But now as we get to here, we do have, in fact, um, a bridge that, an underpass. So we need to make sure to handle that correctly. So for this one, I'm just going to go apply from opposite ends. Or opposite ends fill. And once again, I'm not going to do, so this one I'm not going to do apply with over. I'm just going to do apply because we don't want it to overwrite or break the bridge. So we just go apply, and now we've cleaned up that area over here. Now, of course, if I were to undo that and go apply with overwrite, well, we'd cut through our bridge. So we're just going to apply. So then after that you have that, you can then remove your bridge polygons, and we can now just add... our roads. So now all we need to do here is we're just going to select this and we're going to continue to use the offset ends fill and just go apply. And then same thing over here. And now we can validate the accuracy of our model. So once again I'm just going to work from here and what's a cool concept is if you remove the mosaic and you click on the fly button you can now just take a look at your digital elevation model without the overlapping mosaic, which sometimes can help you sort of see how your features will look. So we can see these ramps, and we can see exactly how they, uh, they are going to appear. Now, obviously, it doesn't provide the uh, information under it. So this will allow us to see if we have any other errors and make sure that we, our ramps are... Uh, correctly uh, digitized, or our, br our bridges as well. So it's just another nice little technique. Now, the thing with bridges is a little bit different than other areas. So anyone who's worked with aerial imagery will know that even though you have a nice accurate bridge, that still doesn't, you can still have some problems in terms of the actual mosaic or ortho that's generated. So in terms of validating the accuracy of your bridge, what you want to look, on, look at is the make sure that things are not moving, pixels are not moving within the lines of the bridge. So what you get here sometimes is these um, reproduction or basically this uh, duplication of pixels in these areas known as occluded zones. So basically when we orthorectify the, re the bridge, it brings the bridge over here but then there's no ground information due to the viewing angle. So it duplicates this. And this we're going to fix in the next step during the mosaicing stage using our new other new tool called the Smart Geofill. But in terms of validating accuracy, all we want to do is make sure that within our lines that the bridges themselves are stable. And then we know that we have accurate bridges. The fact that we have problems in terms of these outer pieces well, that gets fixed, that gets repaired in the mosaicing stage. And we're going to show that right now because it's important to understand that concept. Oops. So actually, just to show the concept again, all we're doing is we basically, we're taking our bridge that looks like this due to the occluded zones and then we're going to very quickly convert it to a nice, aesthetically pleasing bridge in our ortho mosaic. Now, 
generally in the past this has been done uh, as tedious work in Photoshop but at PCI what we're trying to do is we want to create a product that basically eliminates people from having to use non-geospatial software in order to do their workflow. So we've created a, a new tool called Smart Geofill that can also be used along with uh, in this workflow in order to do these final edits. And we're going to show that right now. So what we would do is we would take the DEM that we've generated, so the one that we fixed up just previously, and we have our final mosaic here. So we can zoom to a one-to-one. -one. So in this DEM, with it selected, I'm going to go to Layer. I'm going to go to our DEM editing as well. Even though we're not doing any DEM editing, we need the live DEM or the quick ortho update. And this is where we can copy and paste the pixels we need. So with this, we can move this down to the bottom. We don't need this tool here. And we're just going to look at our mosaic. So the next thing, we're going to go to settings. We're going to enable this special smart geofill uh, setting here. I'm just going to remind myself, I think it's 15 centimeters. Yep, 15 centimeters. And we're going to set this to the pixel size of our mosaic. And this is done so we can help eliminate these rough edges and get a nice smooth edge in there. So once we have that done, we can then zoom out to our overview of the bridge and we're going to just draw our one-to-one -one window. And now it's going to take a little bit longer because it's doing some special filtering so that we can have uh, a very aesthetically pleasing ortho images to work from. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste pixels with special blending and special color balancing over into our final mosaic from different ortho viewing angles. All right, now let's just rearrange our windows a little bit to make a little bit more space. Okay. So I'm now also just going to open up some polygons that I've drawn, but you'll see there's nothing special to these polygons. They're just simply outlining the features that we want to replace, which is really just these edges. Okay, so now we can go into our ortho preview window and we can cycle through all the different viewing angles, orthos of the different viewing angles in order to get a viewing angle without an occluded side for each edge. So, and actually before that we're going to also open up our smart geofill tool. We'll just put it over here. Make this a little bit smaller so we can see that. It's not exactly the nicest arrangement of windows. I could I could have should have been able to do a better job with that. Okay. This is a bit better. So now at this point, what I really would like to do is just copy pixels from here into here based on a good viewing angle. So I can go through my different images and I can look for a viewing angle. And it's best to view it at one to one so you can so there's no resampling. We can find the best viewing angle that gives us the best edge for each one. So we can compare. So for example, ortho five to ortho six and ortho four. I think ortho five is the better one. So we're just going to use that to fix this edge here. So then the next thing would be would be to select this edge in this window. We're just going to change our smart geofill so that the source is always the first one selected and then we're going to force it to go to the mosaic. We're just going to select that and then I can just go copy and paste. As you can see, we've already fixed that side of the bridge now. And it's nice and seamless because it performs automatic blending and we have the options to do color balancing and everything with this copy and paste capability. So although I'm showing you in an aerial concept, this concept is also very true when working in satellite, which if we have time, which I don't think we will, I'll be able, I would show you after. But if you are interested in the satellite side, you can contact us um, after the webinar. So the same thing, I'm going to just fix this other side here. I'm going to choose another ortho. So I'm going to go to one of the other viewing angles that view it from the other side and try to find the best one. So maybe it's two, maybe three, 
maybe one. So if we just look, it looks as though two might be the best one. Okay, so now with that one selected, I just go copy and paste. And now we have that done here. And then just the same concept for the rest of the images. We just find the best viewing angle. So obviously not six. I believe it's four. So four is quite nice. So we just make sure it's selected, copy, paste. As you can see, nice and nice and aesthetically pleasing. And then we just go to our final one here. So we just go, once again, we're going to go to some of the lower ones. Compare one to two. And which one's better? It's hard to sell. I'd say probably two is better. So we're just going to select that and then go copy, paste. And there we have it. So just within a couple minutes, I've repaired this entire bridge. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the hour, so I'm going to have to stop it here. We do all the concepts that I've shown you are also possible to do within satellite side. And the workflow is quite similar. The only difference is when you're working in ortho engine, you often need to do GCP collection in order to improve the math models of the raw satellite images that you might be working with. But other than that, the workflow is essentially the same. Um, if you are interested to learn more about the live DEM editing, as well as our many other tools such as Smart Geofill, Python, and, uh, and a variety of our other capabilities such as our new change detection uh, concepts, and many, many other SAR functionality, uh, you should definitely contact us. We can set up uh, certainly web meetings in order to show you, uh, provide you with a bit more of a showcase of some of these tools. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it back over to Jason and he can close off the webinar.